by Retail Space in the Upstairs Workshop today. I'm going to probably introduce myself a couple of times because I don't see any viewers yet. So, like happens so often, I think I'll, uh, the angle of my camera is a little bit uh, risque here, so let's button up. Um, as so often happens, I've been messing with my ca camera setup, and I had it just right, and then the camera fell out, and it so if you don't mind, hello, Carolyn, I'm going to just see one last time if I can make the alternate camera for my workplace. So I am here. I thank you for joining me. Um, say hello, please. Hello, Royce. I'm struggling with technology again. For a while, um, I had a perfect picture of my popcorn ceiling to show you guys. We're going to enter the studio with this camera. Allow. Start the camera. Okay, maybe it's working, maybe it's not. I think I have to enter, ah, enter studio, boom. Okay, let's see if that's working. Ooh, I think it did. So today, we're just going to mess around with some fun paint and lay experiments. I am so ready for spring. I'm just going to be using some an assortment of glass. I didn't bring any tin, but you could work on cans or so this is a pre-painted glass jar. This is kind of what we're going for. Hey Joy, um, Diana. This is um, a, a little jar, a milk jug, which I think is exceptionally cute that I did a while back. And this has a transfer on it. But today we're going to mess with different colors and mostly use the Rose Chintz paint inlay. I do have at the ready the, where's the front cover? the chateau i'll just show you part of the design i might cut parts of this and use it on um, some of the jars and stuff so let's just get started i'm going to bring the other camera on we'll we'll add add that. mute that microphone and try to make there I think, I hope you can see, I am going to be, there's a little bit of a delay for me to tell what, hello, what you see or don't see. And my camera almost fell over again. I gotta say, Royce, if you're still here, <laughs> I know you'll, um, there. All right. So we've got, where can you see? I think the camera's pointing a little bit. It is just so frustrating, you guys. I want to do a beautiful job for you. And I know you don't want to see all this messing around. You just want to get to business, right? So that's better. Let's see if I can make it a little closer. There, I hope. So we're gonna be painting some jars. I picked out a bunch of colors that I thought would be fun. So we've got some very pale blue. We've got the ever popular 
teal. It's popular in my neck of the woods. So where can you see that? There's that. I've also got a few greens that I want to try. I don't know if that's getting better or not. Um, but I have some greens, a mint. So we're just going to see what these rose chintz inlays look like on the whole variety of colors we're going to be using. So I've got a, a variety of chalk and clay-based paints here. And we're just going to start painting. When we're live, we don't always have the, the best available setup. So I'm just pouring paint and making a mess, pouring paint right onto my jar. I don't, where can you see me? You know what, you guys, I'm going to switch to the other camera. There, I think that probably works better. You can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, so I'm using this, it's almost a gray blue, and just putting a coat of that onto this jar. If you've worked with the paint inlays, you will know that we want to apply them to wet paint. So what I'm going to do is go through and paint these different surfaces with different base colors and hope that by the time I get back to the first one, we'll be able to put on a second coat and apply our inlay. So that guy is painted and ready to set up. I do like to go into the, the mouth of the jar. So we're gonna take that same brush and go around here. When it's all done, there'll be some little flowers and you won't see too far into it, but I like to get that rim of the jar. So we are going to do that. I'm gonna make that whole thing just go away. Um, I do have water and paper towels handy, thank goodness. We're gonna take that and let that gray blue kind of dry off in the background. Hey, Margie, it's so great to have you here. Carolyn, since you love the Chateau, maybe we will use some of that. You know what I think would be pretty is I have this big jar. I don't even know. I think I probably found it at a Goodwill or something, and I just like the shape and the neck on it. So let's paint that one with a, an off-white paint. So this paint is um, kind of reminds me of putty. It's not white. It's not yellow. It's, it's I don't know, it looks like clay or putty to me. I'm going to squirt some out on my plastic table cover and get a clean brush, cleanish. When I say clean, it's all relative unless they're brand new. Not, not even like that one. We'll use this clean brush and put a coat of this putty color. And for this big jar, we can mess around with the Chateau paint inlay. I think that could be gorgeous. So let's see, Kathy, great to have you here. And Diana from Central California. I am... Um, I don't know. I'm working away at my issues with technology. I'm looking forward to the day, and it is coming, that I will have one place that I mostly use to do video so that I can set up a camera and get the angles right. And when I say camera, I pretty much mean cell phone. 
or laptop. But if I if I can record in the same location, right, then I can get things set up ahead of time so you guys don't have to work through all that with me. So let me go back to the introduction. Here I am. I'm Liz with Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. Afton is a very small town, like the population is, I don't know if it's a thousand, but it's on the St. Croix River. We are part of the Twin Cities metro area, but you wouldn't know it because it is very much a small town. It's a historic, lovely village right on the St. Croix River. So that is where I am. That is where my retail shop is, um, right on the main drag of St. Croix Trail South here in Afton. And that is also where I run my online, the online part of my business. So I am both a brick and mortar store and I have an online store as well where I do workshops and classes, all the things that we stockists love to do and love to do with our customers. So if you're in this area, I hope you'll look me up. And if you're not in this area, I hope you'll come visit. But if that doesn't work out either, or even if it does, the best thing for any of us is to have a local stockist who we can turn to when we have questions, when we want to take in-person classes. So you can find a stockist near you by going to the Iron Orchid Designs website and find a retailer. They are arranged geographically, and we have retailers um, all over the world, in, in the U.S., all the states, in Canada. Joy is here from Calgary, right, Joy? Is that where you're from? Yes, you are. And um, so we have stockists all over the place. Find one near you and make him or her, I would say 98% of us are the of the her variety. But there are some guys too, and there are some couples. We have married couples among our stockist crew. Here's another jar. It looks like a jar of spaghetti sauce, right? Kathy, you're right. It is small, but it is a great place to visit. Um, we're super happy that we're close to the Twin Cities, so there's there's a base of, of people to come and take activities and do all the things, but we haven't lost our charm at all. Afton is, um, there's, we're soon to have an espresso coffee pastry shop, but it, it'll, it'll be a locally owned one. We have a couple of restaurants that are quite excellent. There's a, there's a place here in town that is um, in the National Historic Registry. So anyway, it's a fun place to visit. I'm glad you think so too, Kathy. So if you do get to Minnesota or Western Wisconsin, pop in, pop in and see us. So I'm using this green now. Um, I have painted this green on some signs in the past. I don't even know how to quite describe it. It's like a bright olive green. It's not, it's not olive drab. It's, it's a beautiful bright olive. So we're just going to see what all the different colors do with the the rose chintz on many of them and then on that off-white one we're going to use chateau as as our inlay of choice so if any of you guys um, have the inlays but have been nervous about trying them 
because it's brand new with, with IOD, I, the sisters created the concept and made the first ever such thing. It can be just a little bit intimidating, I think, to um, just painting the rim of this a little off camera so I can move on to the next one. But they can be a little bit scary because, you know, you've never done it before. It's a brand new thing. What do you guys think for this one? Light blue or minty green? Margie, have a great day at work too. I hope you have a fabulous day there in Central Texas. Minty green or light blue? I'm going to give you guys a minute to uh, chime in what you would like to see for this one. I have, where's my light blue? This one, very pale, soft, powdery blue or minty green. So if no one, up, oh, Nancy said, Nancy and Joy are wanting blue. So that's it so far. I will paint this one before I paint that one. So you still have time to get your vote in. I'm going to do this turquoise for my, for my bottle. These are, um, these are bottles I bought for my grandsons. They came with a, you know, a permanent straw, but they don't use them as much as they used to. So I'm just going to paint it up and make it cute using this gorgeous, I, I don't know if it's, it's turquoise, I guess, not really teal. But it's one of my favorite colors. See if I can get that out of the tube here. I may need to cut a wider tip. I think it closed up on me here. Ah, got it. No blood. Squirting that on my work surface too. Let's come down and and this is what I do, you guys. I use a plastic, very, very inexpensive plastic table covers, typically from the dollar store or somewhere like that. And I just paint right on my surface. And when it gets too yucky, I take it away and I put, on, put down a new one. So... I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm just saying it's the way I tend to do these kind of projects. What I think is the best way is the way that works for you. So lean into that. Lean into your favorites. We got the turquoise going. Gorgeous color. I'm going to paint the bottom. And we're just going to see how these inlays look. Let's see. Oop, we got we got one minty green. We got a green and a pale blue and a green. Oh my goodness. We're kind of tied. I don't think I want to do it half and half. <laughs> Aha though. I did have an idea that I was thinking about driving in. What do you say we try my idea, which is to um, put stripes on and we could do blue and minty green. That could be cool, right? And what I would do then is once that dries, I will only put the paint inlay on one color of the stripe. So I don't know. Anybody okay with that idea? If we do stripes on our cup, I could do stripes down or around. I don't know because we've got blue, light blue, green, pale blue, light green, minty green. Oh, I think you like the idea, Kathy, of the stripes and Kathleen as well. What the heck? Let's try it. 
What do we have to lose? Nothing. If we haven't learned yet, we can always paint over if we do not like the result. So I'm going to get a little bit of a smaller paintbrush just right over here. Okay. Here's some brushes. You know, because I'm moving from project to project, I'm just leaving my um, my dirty brushes. I'm not washing them out. So let's find this one, this minty green. And I think I'm going to go up and down with the stripes. I'm getting a little bit of bristles in here. And because I do like a vintage rough look, I am totally okay with imperfect stripes. So I'm going to go around this paint. Um, it's drying up a bit, but I know that I can re- What is the right word? I can reconstitute uh, it with water. So for now, we're just going to go around and do stripes. And I'm winging it. So there's one. I think we can have four of this color. This could be a smashing success or a good lesson learned. And I'm painting right over the lettering on the front and just doing about the width of the brush, a little bit more than. So there is a stripe of minty green. I'll come around the top of the jar in the same place as the stripe. And we're going to set that aside to dry. I'm going to put a little bit of clean water in this paint for when we get to it next. It could be a little bit reconstituted. All right. So we have a base coat on all of our jars. This was jar number one. It's almost dry. I do have a a dryer here. Up, oh, we have Cincinnati in the house. Um, we're going to dry this more completely. It's pretty dry in most of the areas. It's kind of thicker paint along the edges. So I'm just going to get it dry. And get some of the other ones too. Whoops. So this guy's good. So we're gonna go back to that same blue color before I put it on though. I'm gonna get myself a cleanish work area here. Just some paper towels for the moment. And we will cut some paint inlay. This is a package I'd opened for earlier projects. My scissors are off camera too, or are they? No, I did plan ahead, got scissors. So I'm just gonna cut out some of the beautiful rose chintz design from this inlay. I'll sort of dry fit it. It's going to go that direction. Um, so I'm going to cut a bit more. I don't want to cover the entire surface with roses, but I do want them spread out across the whole thing. So 
So here's some inlay pieces to try out. So I'm going to go back to the correct paint brush, pour some out on my, and we're just going to put a second coat of paint on this jar. I'm not going to do inlays around the top because later I will use some jute or sari ribbon or something like that to finish off the jar. This is sort of a, I don't know, reminds me of faded denim. So this jar is wet. I am going to just go for it here and apply the paint and lay right there. So pushing that with my fingers down into the wet paint. So we have it on there. I'm gonna come around with another piece of rose chintz into the wet paint. So we're coming around the entire jar and then we have a blank area right here. I'm just going to put the part that fits right there. And some of this inlay won't even be used at all because it's not in paint. But there we go. So the next step with inlays, right? We, we put them onto the wet paint. We take clean water and we wet that inlay to help release the painted design. And then we'll set that aside to dry and move on to one of our other jars. So one of my big things for doing this today is just trying the inlays on different colors and, and also wanting to encourage people who have not tried them out yet to, to try them out on a small, a small project that is less intimidating and you'll be less upset with yourself if you get upset with yourself about things not turning out perfectly. I mean, None of us want to waste our resources, right? But I'm here to encourage you to, you know, don't, don't waste them, but think of it as a learning. Choose a project that's smaller and less intimidating when you first start and realize you are learning valuable lessons that are going to apply to bigger projects down the road. I'm uh, doing coat number two of my minty green stripe on the jar that we decided to stripe up. I could be using painter's tape and that kind of thing, but when I do the next, when this is dry, I'll be a little more exacting with the blue stripe. We'll see how it turns out. Um, I'm often pretty, well, I try to stay loose when I'm working, but I definitely am more loose when I'm on camera because I don't want you guys to have to wait around for me to get obsessive about lines and such. So we have that. Um, this guy's almost dry. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun a bit. Hi, Carmen. Shannon, you're never too late. You, you catch what you catch, and there's always the replay. So we're just doing this beautiful turquoise bottle. Getting that paint dry. 
We'll be ready for coat number two. So we have had sunshine the last two days here in the St. Croix River Valley. I legit forgot that skies can sometimes be blue. They've been gray. It's been so gray and cloudy here for a long time. That yesterday when I saw white fluffy clouds and a little patch of blue, I, I literally just kind of went, oh, what is that? It's blue sky. So this color. Beautiful turquoise, coat number two on our bottle. I'm going to squirt right on the bottle this time. Find that paintbrush because, like I said, I'm not washing them because I know I'm coming in with a second coat. You guys know I haven't gone anywhere. Well, this is supposed to be for my baby blue color. Ugh, you know what? I did put that one in water. That's okay. We're going to spread this around, going quickly so it stays damp while I get the whole thing, and we can lay the inlay. This will also be, I think, the rose chintz. I don't know. Maybe we'll use the chateau on here. What do you think? The chateau could be super pretty on this color. Um. Salvatoria, I can tell you that I'm using blues and greens. I am using, um, this is very much a, an old school turquoise. The other colors I've got going on today are a, a brighter olive green, a baby blue, a minty green. I've got a, an off white that looks like putty in my my idea here is to experiment with colors and paint inlays in a way that is, is not expensive. We're using recycled glass and I am using bits of inlay that I have left from other projects. So it's a pretty darn uh, cost-effective way to play around with transfers. Oh, it is not Chateau that I'm using. It is Birds of Paradise. This one's called Paradise, right? We're going to use Paradise. I do have some Chateau, but we're going to use this guy. So I've got my scissors. I'm going to, this, these, the heads of these birds just does not, they don't belong on this jar. So I'm going to use this contrasting red orange right across there. Push it down into the wet paint, make contact. I don't know if you can see, I'm a little bit off camera, but I'm just rubbing it down with my finger. Um, I don't know how well the birds will show up because their coloring is very similar to the color of the, the bottle, but I think they'll show up. So we're going to try them. We're going to try them right here. I think maybe I only have room for one. So I'm going to cut the other bird off. There we go. This blue bird of paradise is going down on the bottle. The branch is going down. When I start to run into the other design, I will just leave it. So we've got that happening.
I'm going to wet that a little bit. Just getting some water. Clean water, I'm putting it on with my fingers, patting it so I'm not gonna move that inlay around too much. Get the flower. And there that is. Um, I am on the Iron Orchid Designs page. So we use exclusively Iron Orchid Designs transfers and inlays. I'm responding to Salvatoria here. Um, we try to stay very neutral with paint brands. I'm using a chalk based clay based paint and if you'd like to private message me salvatoria if it's something you really want to know from my liza jane designs page i can let you know the paint brands that i carry and that i'm using but on the iron orchid designs page we're just paint neutral because many, many quality paints are out there and we don't want to give preference to one over another. Um, so if you want to know, just send me a little private message, Liza Jane Designs, and I will fill you in on the specifics of the paints that I'm using. I'm going through my dash of paint inlay scraps. I think I would like to use the bird of parrot or the paradise on that clay colored. So I have this piece of inlay that we're going to use on the on this jar. So this jar is painted in this putty color, chalky clay based paint. I'm going to put a second coat for here. I'm just gonna paint on the front cause we're gonna do the design on the front of this one only for right now. I probably, like I tend to do, a uh, bit off more than I could chew here. So I'm going to, yeah, we've been on almost 40 minutes already. So let's try to finish up at least a couple of these that we have started. And I will finish the rest off camera and post them in the Iron Orchid Designs tribe. So... I can make a little um, plug for the IOD Creative Tribe. If you are not a member, I so encourage you to become a member. As a stockist myself, I get so much inspiration there from other stockists and from customers. Um, there are so many folks in the tribe and the interests are so varied. I mean, we have sugar arts and clay arts and anything you might be interested in, you're gonna find examples of what other creatives are doing and you're sure to be inspired. I mean, it's, my problem is I don't have enough time to do all the things I wanna try. So we have wet paint, clay colored on here. And I'm going to use, where did I put it? Right here. I'm going to strategically cut a piece of this transfer, so it, or this inlay. So I've got a beautiful design on the front of this glass vessel. So I am just cutting 
the birds with some of those beautiful sort of salmon colored flowers. We're going to go with that. Here is the wet paint. I'm going to lean it against myself so you get a good angle here. Hope I don't ruin my blouse, but you know, eventually it'll be ruined. Because I get paint on all my clothes. So I am just going to press that in. I want to make sure to get both the birds. I don't know yet on this one how I'll seal it, but I have a plan to seal at least some of these that I'm doing with a high gloss sealer. So they have the look of a glossy, glassy ceramic. So there's all those considerations and creative decisions to make too. You know, the base paint color you want to use and how's that going to look? The inlay or transfers themselves. The finish you're going to choose, you could use um, a wax or a matte poly, a wet, a, a wet, a matte water-based sealer of any kind or satin to make it a bit, or you can go high gloss, and then pour on an epoxy type sealer and get a real glass look. So there is that guy. I'm going to set him aside to dry. I'm going to, I am going to come around. Remember these guys that we cut aside because they were just part bird? Couldn't see much of them. I'm going to put a little of this off white paint. To find my off white brush. And we're going to make those cute little birds pop up from the bottom of the back side of this base. Rushing. So here's this down on the bottom, little bird heads peeking up on the back side. Push those in, clean water. I love the fun little quirky details. So there we have little birds on the back. All right. Coming back to our stripey jar. Let's give that a good dry. Salvatoria, I totally agree with you. Um, Iron Orchid Designs does rock. Um, in my view, they are the best of the best. And that is why I am a retailer and huge fan myself of everything Iron Orchid Designs. Their designs are beautiful. The company is always on the cutting edge and always caring to give the very best to our customers. You know you're going to get quality when you when you deal with iron orchid designs. That's that's just the truth. That's just a fact. All right, I'm going to slow down a tiny bit to try to make the next stripes on here a little bit neater. But I am up against a clock here, right? So I'm going to use a smaller, kind of more of an artist type brush, a little more control with this brush, and be a bit neater along the edges here. Can you see it? And I don't know if this will be cute, but if I don't like it, I can take it off and try something else. These colors, eh. 
They're fun, I guess. So we have a stripe right there. The big lesson here is just, you know, don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> don't be afraid to have a project that's less than your favorite. They're not all going to be your very favorites. But I think this will be cute. It's looking kind of cool. What do you guys think? Any comments here? Are we we doing all right with our green and blue striped flower vase? Hello from Oklahoma. I love paint inlays. I love paint inlays too. And when you start working with them, you just you just get more and more ideas for fun ways to use them. I love that you can use the multiple times. I love myself. I love that you cannot 100% control the results. You can, you can practice best practices, but the inlays are going to a little bit exert their own will, if inlays can be said to have will. I don't know. So there's our stripey jar. I'm going to set that aside. This one I may need to finish up off camera. And I don't know for sure if what inlay I want to use on it. My thought right now is to use an inlay only on one of the colors. Or possibly I'll use different inlays on different colors. Who knows? We don't know yet what's going to happen with that. The creative process where we surprise ourselves, right? So I am finishing just the edges of that jar. And we're going to let that dry. And I think it's kind of cute. I do think it's kind of cute. It's, uh, it's whimsical. I'm going to come back to jar number one. Not completely dry. And we're getting close to 50 minutes here on online. So I'm going to dry it with my heat gun. Um, so I think the stripes would be really pretty with the tints, kind of a sweet look. Sherry, do we have events coming up? Oh. If you haven't been following my news about my Airbnb, I, I invite you to check, check that out. We'll have a grand opening of the Airbnb coming up in a bit. And I'll be moving the shop again, just down the road a half a mile. So yes, there will be events. And here in Afton, you can always count on the big, the big events here in Afton. Um, Strawberry Festival in June. All right, I'm getting this wet to see if Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That just makes me so happy when. Can we see that beautiful release of the chintz paint on there? I love it. I totally love that. So let's get more of this wet. I like the rope. Oh. I have never placed rose chintz on a color I didn't like it on. I've seen it done beautifully on black. I'm loving it on this faded denim. Uh, because I am rushing this a bit, you know, some of the paint is pulling up. But because I like that vintage rough look, that is not a problem for me. It's, a, it's almost like a benefit because we get real looking distress. It doesn't look, um, I don't know, it doesn't look phony. It looks legitimately organically distressed. And I love that. 
So I'm loving this rose chintz on this denim -y color. Yep, yep, yep. So we're going to set that guy aside. We are going to try to at least show you a few of these finished up to reward you for hanging in there with me. I'm a big mess. Are there any other people watching who get messy when they create? Are there, is there anyone watching who doesn't get messy when they create? That's probably the person I need to learn from more. Um, but let's just keep going so we can show a couple before we have to go away. I'm going to grab this little soda bottle one. Not really dry, so we're going to dry it. Yeah, Salvadoria, I have ruined some nice clothes too. Uh, and I have clothes that I will not paint in until the day I paint in them. But I try never to paint in brand new clothes. And I get around that by buying vintage clothing. So even my brand new clothes sometimes are not brand new. So I am the, the bird of paradise here on this inlay. We're going to see if he shows up very well on the similarly colored. Um, good. We've got messy, messy, messy. Yes. I'm all about the messy. I like to, you know, cover my work area so my husband doesn't get upset. I don't like to, um, <laughs> when I turn this off, right? I, I don't want to be the reason we can't have nice things. Has anyone ever been told that as a child or an adult? You're the reason we can't have nice things, Liz. It's like, I don't want, I don't want that on me. So I try to only mess up my belongings none that are community property in our home. Here we go, pulling the bird off and it is showing up nicely. It could have stayed on there longer. But again, I, I really like that organic distress. Can you see the bird? There it is. He's looking good. Um, a lot of this roughness is happening because I'm rushing it. And I'm rushing it because I want you to, you know, get something out of watching this video. Oh, it's beautiful. I love how it looks. The orange against that turquoise is just gorgeous. I really like this. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. And we're going to do this last one and we're going to pull off the front. I'm going to keep working these when we're off camera and I will finish them up and post a picture in the, the IOD tribe. If you're not in that, just search on Facebook for IOD Creative Tribe. You will... Uh, be brought to the page where you can ask to join. It is a private group because, you know, we have basic rules like be nice to each other. And also to remind stockists like myself that the tribe is not a place to try to sell anyone anything. The tribe is about inspiration. And that's it. So you don't have to expect to be bombarded by ads or, or people trying to talk you into buying something from you. The, the tribe is all about supporting one another and encouraging one another and inspiring one another. So check out the IOD Creative Tribe if you're not a member already.
I'm really hoping this one is dry enough because I want this one to come out. I really, really, really have high hopes for this one. But you know what, guys? If it doesn't come out, I can recoat it with off-white paint and try again. And there's no reason I can't add um, transfers over some of this, too. So here we go with the big reveal on the final one for today. Getting that wet again. Oops, not as great as I would like. All right, you guys, this one is not a success. Not a success. So you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to try this again off camera, taking my time, letting my paint dry because I think it's going to be gorgeous. Uh, I was just rushing it too much to make it so this time. So I'm going to try it again. And the same promise is here that I will share in the tribe. So please go on over and check it out there. I'm going to sign off now. It's been way too long. I am Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. And my messy hands and my very messy workstation right now. I'm going to keep working at these a bit. Post some pictures of what happens in the IOD Creative Tribe. If you're in the St. Croix River Valley, the Twin Cities metro area, please come check out all things Iron Orchid Designs here in Afton. And if I'm not your stockist, please find one close to you by going to the Iron Orchid Designs page and the retail locator. Um, it, it is very worthwhile to have a local stockist. We totally love our people and will do all we can to encourage you and help you understand how to use all things IOD. So signing off for now. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Irene. Yeah, you're right. You have to let the paint dry. I was rushing it. Um, we're going to give it a go. And I'm just going to sign off for now. Bye, Royce. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, Irene and Joy and Shannon and everyone. I'll see you next time.